Hey, what's up you guys? I am back. I think this shirt is just so appropriate. I'm wearing a freshman shirt that I probably got when I was a freshman and I really liked it a lot. So thank you, Anusu. So, anyways, who cares about the shirt? Today, we're gonna be talking about something extremely, extremely important and that important thing is modules. So today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you everything that you need to know about modules, modular credits, about prefixes, about your workload, about your examinations and every every everything like that. I also want to say that if you haven't watched this video, everything that you should know before joining NUS, you're definitely missing out. And also please watch my introductory video to this entire series. And also do subscribe and hit the notification bell because next week I'll be actually going through everything related to how to graduate in terms of what are the graduation requirements, what are the different types of modules you specifically have to take for your faculty and things like that. So definitely do subscribe and I'll see you in my next video as well. Make sure you watch till the end of this video because I'll be linking my NUS academic planning template so you can feel free to download it, refer to it, adapt it to however you want, print it on your wall, anything that you want, just go and have fun with it. With that being said, if you want to show some love, definitely do like and comment down below your favourite tip that you found the most useful. But with that being said, let's just dive right in. I actually want to start out this entire video by reading some context about our education system because I think it's very important to also appreciate the education system and put things into context and I also think it's very very underrated so let me just read it out. <clears throat> so this is my reading voice. We have the undergraduate and graduate curricula are based on a modular system. The NUS modular system combines the rigour and depth of the British university system with the flexibility and breadth of the American system. Under this system, workloads are expressed in terms of modular credits, bracket MCs, and academic performance is measured via grade points on a five-point scale. Students can progress at their own pace and choose from a wide range of modules offered by different faculties or schools. The modular system offers students the possibility of accelerating their courses of study by taking more modules per semester, bracket above the average of 20 MCs per semester, bracket, close bracket, subject to the approval of their home faculty. So basically what they're saying over here in this little blurb is that you'll be graded on a 5 point scale which means that if you want a max cap such as cap 5, you're probably like an Einstein, that's awesome for you. Another thing is that you have so many different modules that you can choose from while you graduate and another thing they're saying is that on average people actually take 20 MCs or modular credits per semester. So no worries if you don't understand everything right now, I'll be running through everything with you guys. <laughs> Okay, so for the first part, what are modular credits? So generally speaking, the most important thing for you to know is that different modules will have different numbers of modular credits or MCs, it's the same thing. So most modules on average, if they are creditable, will have 4 MCs on average. This is probably like a normal workload I would say and then when they said that on average people take 20 MCs, it means that on average people actually take 5 creditable courses per semester because 5 times 4 will give you 20 MCs which could equate to taking one 12 MC module and also one 8 MC module. Some modules actually have a different number of MCs. For instance, 0 MCs, 2 MCs, 3 MCs, 6 MCs, 8 MCs or even 12 MCs. The MC would be proportional to the difficulty-ish of the course. So I think it's good to know for you guys. So some people actually like to overpack or what we call overload where they actually take more than 20 MCs in a semester. So for instance, if you want to graduate earlier, some people like to take 6 modules that are worth 24 MCs on average for every single semester so that they can perhaps graduate earlier. Some people also like to do that so that in year 3 and 4, they can chillax a little bit more. It's really up to you. But generally speaking, most people take 20 MCs per semester. Another thing that I want you guys to know is that for some faculties, right, there is a minimum cap that you may need to hit such that you can overload. So this is to prevent students who are not specifically doing too well to, you know, pack too many MCs. 
So I think this is a very important point to note because some of my friends, they actually do overload in terms of MCs, but then after that, they realize that their cap is too low. And then later on, they cannot continue on their plan anyway, and it may have been better for them to just follow a normal path. So it's really up to your own capability and also your own goals and desires and, and dreams and everything. So just something to note. Okay, now we'll be talking all about prefixes in terms of the letters and in terms of the numbers. So a normal module will be named, for instance, MKT1701. So the most important thing in this entire module that you need to know is the first three letters. So for instance, MKT stands for marketing, FIN1 something 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 will stand for finance, uh, I believe like OTM will stand for Operations Management. So sometimes it's just two letters. So NM actually may stand for New Media. And then you also have other courses such as TR something, 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 which probably stands for Innovation. I don't know why it's TR. Oh, and then you have MNO, which stands for Managerial Organizational Behavior, which stands for MNO, which is more towards the HR side. So I think it's just very important for you guys to know that these letters represent different faculties or different disciplines. Another thing is that the number, the first number right after the letter is actually very important because it stands for the so-called difficulty level. So when you see something that's like MKT, one something 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 versus MKT two something something something. Basically, what it means is that the level two mod or the level two K two K because two thousand that level mod would be harder than the level one mod. So this brings me on to the next part, which is all about requisites. So we have prerequisites, we have co-requisites, and we have preclusions. Prerequisites are basically modules that you need to take on before being able to take this module on. So for instance, if you see this like MNO 3K mod, it may have like a prerequisite that says that you need to take this MNO 1K mod or MNO 2K mod, which means that you need to take those modules first before you can take this specific MNO 3K mod. So that's basically a prerequisite, it's pretty easy to understand, so it's just like something that you need to do before you take this new module. A co-requisite just basically means a complementary module, so you have to take these two modules at the same time. So for instance, if you see this Fin 3K mod and it says that it has a co-requisite with this other Fin mod, it means that you need to take these two modules together and after that you have preclusions. So preclusions just basically mean that if you take this module, you cannot take this other module. So definitely do head to your department module advisor so it's clear for you guys and just so you can make sure that you are taking the correct modules at any given point of time. So now you know which modules to take, now we can actually talk about workload. Usually the workload of your module will be classified into these five numbers. So I know it sounds a little bit confusing but let me break it down for you guys. The first digit will refer to the number of lecture hours. So the second digit will refer to the number of tutorial hours. The third digit will refer to the number of laboratory hours. The fourth one will refer to the number of hours for projects, assignments, field work, etc. This will cater to assignments, independent studies, field work or other form of continuous assessments that contribute towards the final grade of the module. And the fifth digit will represent the number of hours for preparatory work. So this refers to the number of hours a student is expected to spend each week in preparing for lectures and tutorials. So generally speaking, for instance, if you see 22033 on an average week, this module requires you to spend 2 hours on lectures, 2 hours on tutorials, 0 hours on laboratory hours, 3 hours for projects, assignments and fieldwork, and another 3 hours to prepare for the module itself. So I hope that's very very clear and with that you can actually prepare in advance based on the workload that you foresee yourself having. Okay, so on average, a 4MC module will require 10 hours of work a week, including lectures, tutorials, lab sessions, assignments, and independent or group study. In general, just to make it easier for you to calculate, in general, a 1MC module will take up about 2.5 hours, a 2MC module will take up about 5 hours, a 3MC module will take up about 7.5 hours a week, a 4MC module will take about 10 hours a week. So that's definitely how you can calculate your workload in advance. So that being said, now we can move on to examinations. 
So different modules will have very very different styles to their exams. Some modules have one big exam at the end of the entire semester. Some modules have zero exams and it's only based on your assignments and projects. That's how you get a final grade. Some other modules will have for instance three small exams broken out throughout the entire semester etc. So definitely do check on NUS mods whether that specific module has exams or not. So as promised, here is the bonus resource that you must have been waiting for. So this is my own personal NUS academic module planning sheet and as promised, I've really packed as much information as I can in this planning sheet and don't worry because I will be setting this link such that anyone can view and please feel free to share it with anyone, I really don't mind. Now, moving on to the fourth tab, this tab is going to be extremely important for you. Feel free to duplicate the other tabs by clicking this file button and then make a copy and then do your pizzazz and whatever you want with it. But for links over here, you definitely want to keep referring to them. There are seven links that I put over here that I find very very important for any BBA student. If you're not in the BBA degree, no worries, just find your own links. I'm so sorry. Yeah, find your own links for your own faculty and you are good to go. Another thing is that I found it very very helpful for me to give you know a summary. So it's just a very good explanation of what to expect from each link. And also over here I put a screenshot for our visual friends so that it will be easy for you to see at a glance what to expect from these links. So now let's just get started to the first link. So for the first link you can actually expect to see a very good overview of the curriculum. As I mentioned in my video, make sure that you are on the correct academic year and then you can actually proceed to see all your general requirements that you need for you to graduate including your honours program requirements and also your graduating requirements and also advanced placement credits and exemptions and student course code. So for the second link, this is your module registration overview workflow. So this is actually a very very helpful graphic for you to know exactly what to do at any point of time at the start of any semester. So especially if you're a freshie, this can be very very confusing but I feel like this graphic is a perfect representation of what you need to do. So the first thing you need to do is to just submit your academic plan. If you have my sheet over there, it should be no problem for you. After that, you need to make sure that you know your degree requirements. Again, if you looked at the first link, this should be no problem for you. And right now, you need to make your timetable. So later, I'll be going through a few things. And also, there'll be a video coming up where I teach you step by step how to build your timetable. So make sure you subscribe so that you know when that video comes out. And after that, you need to start you know, submitting your modules for registration via ModReg. And then after that, you want to make sure that you've calculated all your MCs to be correct. If you're using my sheet, again, it should be no problem and you should know all the MCs that you should be having. And then after that, let's just say you don't get your module, you want to make sure that you submit appeals. So later, I'll be going through very briefly of how some of the links will help with this whole entire process. So fret not. Also, if you scroll down actually, it shows you a very good representation of how the different systems actually intertwine into one ecosystem over here. So it all starts with mod rank and then it moves on to the staging and then it moves on to any rank and then at the end of all your bidding processes, it moves on to Luminous or Lumi NUS. Luminous is basically for you to see all your files from your prof and everything like that. But right now we're definitely focusing much more on this process over here. So it also tells you a little bit more about priority scores and tiebreakers and more specifically it actually shares with you a lot about what happens in round 1, round 2 and round 3. So this is definitely something that's very very important to look at and will be very very helpful for you especially if you're new to this entire thing. It also tells you a lot more about how to bid for your tutorials and things like that. It also teaches you how to drop classes because sometimes you take a class and you don't like it anymore, you can definitely drop it, no worries at all. And then if you need to appeal, you can refer to this link over here. Okay, so now this link is actually a mod reg FAQ, it's a very very good consolidation of everything that you need to know regarding NUS related academic activities such as the plagiarism warning, the academic culture, the NUS honor code, respective course outlines or module outlines, other module registration related links, FSP or field service project and your honors dissertation. So this link is actually a very very helpful consolidation of many other links. So it may not look like it because it looks very short and sweet but it's linked to many many other links that you definitely want to take a look if you are curious. So another thing over here is that this is the help email and this lad will be answering all your questions regarding modules so please do email him if you have any questions regarding swapping modules or registering for modules. 
If you have any questions about SU, you can definitely check it out here. If you have any question about your GE modules, you can check it out here. And basically, it also links you to NES mods and all your module outlines and everything. It also tells you a lot more about your FSP as well as your honours dissertation. So this link is very very helpful for me. So now moving on to the fourth link, this is your modules list. So essentially what you need to know is that this link is essentially a link of all your updated modules. So this is very important because many of the time, as you can see every single semester, some modules will change and everything will be reflected here. So especially if you want to see whether your module still exists and is still functioning, definitely click on this drop-down menu so that you can see everything in detail. Now, the next link is also extremely important and I will be diving deeper into NUS mods in another video when I teach you how to build your timetable specifically. However, this link is actually very, very helpful for you to, you know, research on the modules. And as I mentioned previously, you can actually see over here that um, you know, you need to make sure that you fulfill the prerequisites, you want to make sure that it's on the correct semester, you want to make sure that the workload is something doable, and that you're okay with this, no exams and everything like that. And after that, you can proceed to building your timetable over here. Again, do not worry because I'll be going through an entire video on how to build your timetable when the time is right. So right now, to be honest, a lot of the modules are not updated yet. As you can see, it's, you know, it's really not updated right now. So just give me a moment and when it's updated, I promise you, I will definitely create a video teaching you how to build your timetable. So right now, no worries about that at all. Your mod reg schedule. So I found that this link is actually very important. Uh, so you want to click on mod reg schedule because every sem there's going to be a new schedule. So the coming sem is 2020 to 2021. So definitely refer to this link for you to see when round zero opens, when you'll get your results for the outcome of your round zero. You know, when round one opens, when round two opens, when round three opens, and then later you can proceed to you know, selecting more tutorials and swapping your tutorials and you can also proceed to also appealing for different modules. So last but not least, we actually have this link over here. So this is actually a very detailed instruction manual for module registration on ModRag. And if you're someone that's a lot more visual like me, I'm a very visual creature as you can see, I think this is actually a very very helpful resource that will teach you exactly what to click at any point of time. For you to see your rounds, for you to see if it was successful or not, for you to swap your tutorials, for you to you know bid for your tutorials, etc, etc, etc. Everything that you need to know about ModRag is literally over here and I think it's very very convenient. So I'm very appreciative for this user guide. So definitely do refer to it. Make sure that you actually make a copy and then do whatever you need to do. So please comment down below what you liked about this sheet or if you have any questions and I'll be more than happy to read them and answer them if I can. Or if you have any ideas or comments or if I wrote something wrongly, please do comment on my YouTube video because I always check my comments on my YouTube video and I would really genuinely appreciate it. So now that being said, I have run through my entire bonus resource. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. So thank you so much. So that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed the video content and I hope that it helped you a lot. If you enjoyed this video, definitely again, do like, comment and hit the subscribe button and also make sure you stay in tune for the next video where I'll be sharing everything related to graduating requirements. That video will by far be extremely important. So please, please, please stay tuned and watch that video. So I really hope to see you guys in the next episode.